You know that old saying, no good deed goes unpunished? Well, that certainly is the case with today's sad story. Hi everybody, Steve here at San Francisco National Cemetery in San Bruno, California, which is maybe 15, 20 minutes south of downtown San Francisco. It's a beautiful day, but off in the distance you can see the, the fog rolling in, which it does nearly every day here in uh, San Francisco. Today I'm here to share with you kind of an unbelievable story. I mean, it's just weird how timing and fate and strange things collide sometimes and how doing something good for someone can actually come back to bite you. I'm here to visit the gravesite of Oliver Wellington Sippel, who just went by the nickname Billy, Billy Sippel. And if any of you happen to remember him from all the press coverage that he received back in the 1970s, that's probably the name you remember. And the thing I love so much about national cemeteries is that the sections are well marked, they have a map usually right when you come in the front gates, and every headstone is marked with the row and the section, so it just makes it so easy to find. And I'm really surprised that no one has visited and added a GPS to his Find a Grave memorial page. Someone had indicated the number on his Find a Grave memorial page so I just added a GPS although I guess like I say it's it's pretty easy to find so you probably wouldn't even need it anyway but it might save you a little bit of time if you're coming to visit in person and I hope that some of you will visit in person I'm not sure he has had visitors and I think after you hear his story maybe some of you will want to visit in person private first-class Sippel was a highly decorated marine who served in Vietnam and I just happened to notice that he was born in 1941, which means he was born right in the middle of World War II. His life really did seem to intersect quite a number of historic moments in history. So I'm sure that some of you will remember that back in 1975, on September 22nd, 1975, President Gerald Ford came to San Francisco to attend an event at the St. Francis Hotel in Union Square, which is in downtown San Francisco. And Billy Sipple decided that he would attend the event to see if he could get a glimpse of President Ford, who was, happened to be in town. And Billy Sipple happened to also live here in San Francisco, not far away. Well, as luck and history would have it, Billy just so happened to be standing right next to Sarah Jane Moore. Does that name ring a bell? On that day, standing right there next to Billy, she pulled out a gun and tried to assassinate President Gerald Ford. She fired a shot and missed, and without hesitating, Billy grabbed her arm and grabbed the gun and prevented her from taking a second shot. It's very possible that his quick thinking and just being in the right place at the right time prevented the assassination of President Ford. So of course, all of this made headline news Billy Sipple became a household name, at least for a while. The Secret Service and the White House were extremely grateful, of course. But unfortunately, the story didn't end there. While Billy Sipple may have saved the president's life, he ended up inadvertently destroying his own life. And that's where the story takes a weird turn. So it turns out Billy Sipple was gay, but he was very closeted. This was back in the 1970s. Almost nobody was out back in the 1970s. You could lose your job. You could even be put in jail for being gay. I mean, it was not a time when almost anybody came out of the closet. But when the press discovered that Billy was gay, they saw an opportunity, especially those in the gay press who realized that a gay person had never been a hero in the media before. I mean, that was a bigger story than the story itself. Even though Billy pleaded with the press to not divulge, you know, not to out him, just for historic reasons, they just didn't feel as if they could keep it a secret, which so often did happen in the past. I guess it context is everything, right? And even his story today, from what I've read, is still being taught in journalism ethics classes all over the country. After he was outed, his family completely disowned him. I don't know if he lost his job or not. I'm guessing he probably did. And he was really shunned. And his life took a downward spiral. I don't know if he was a drinker before, but certainly afterwards, apparently, he became a very heavy drinker, had lots of issues. I know he had some physical issues because of his service. And then I think uh, emotional issues because of all of the media attention and everything that had happened. And being completely disowned by his family, who had no idea that he was gay. 
So his good deed really did turn into a major punishment and came back to bite him in the end. It's also interesting that Harvey Milk, who became San Francisco's supervisor and was later assassinated by someone who's also buried in this cemetery. I mean, how weird is that? He advocated for outing Billy for the greater good that it would do, you know, for the LGBTQ community. So it's really interesting when you think of the sacrifices that Billy made for his country, both by choice and not by choice. It definitely seems like he was here for a purpose, to help change the world in a lot of different ways. Whether he intended to or not, heroic acts are not always intentional. Sometimes they just happen. They're forced upon you. But it turns out that Billy Sipple had worked with Harvey Milk, helping to get him elected. So again, how strange is that? And then Harvey Milk, I wouldn't say he turned on him, but he just felt like even though Billy had helped him, he felt like this was just something bigger than both of them. And the world needed to know that there are gay heroes out there. So what do you think? I mean, it really is a moral and ethical issue. And he did sue. Billy did sue the press and spent many years suing because of invasion of privacy. But in the end, he lost his case because once you become part of the news and you become a famous public figure, you no longer have the same rights as a private citizen. So the courts ruled against him and he lost his case. Sadly, in the end, Billy died at the age of 47. I was never able to really find an exact cause of death. Most of the reports that I read made it sound like he had become an alcoholic and just drank himself to death, or maybe, you know, maybe he died from some other cause related to his physical illnesses. If any of you happen to know exactly how he died, please share with us. I always like, especially if it's a first-hand account, if you knew him or knew somebody who knew him, it's always, it would be nice to have an accurate cause of death since I wasn't able to find one online. He died on February 2nd, 1989 at the young age of 47. He helped change history whether he intended to or not, whether he wanted to or not, and not just gay history, world history or U.S. history. Probably world history too because, you know, there's a domino effect with all of these things. So thank you, Billy Sipple, for your service and for helping to change the world and make it a better place. Oh, and as far as being disowned by his parents, I read one article that said that they eventually accepted him and they reconciled. But then I read another article that said when his mother died, his father banned him from the funeral. Didn't allow him to attend his mother's funeral. So I don't know which story is correct. If any of you happen to know, let us, let us know. Share with us in the comments section. How parents can choose religion or politics over their own flesh and blood, over their children, will forever leave me baffled. I just can't understand that. I personally think that love and compassion and kindness are so much more important than politics or religion. But for whatever reason, there's something in our nature that causes so many people to choose hate over love. I don't get it, and I'm, I know I never will, but it's a powerful force and I don't think it's ever gonna change. So it's just one of those constant battles and I guess Billy was one of the, the warriors who left this world a hero. And even if in the end he wasn't proud of himself, there are millions of people today who sure are. If you're wondering what happened to Sarah Jane Moore, she received a life sentence for her assassination attempt, but in 1979, she escaped from prison. But, not surprisingly, she was captured a few hours later. What is surprising, at least to me, is that she only served 32 years. She was released from prison on December 31st, 2007, and she's now 91 years old. As far as the history books go, she's only one of two women who ever tried to assassinate an American president. And, for some bizarre reason, both attempts were made on the life of President Ford. The other would-be female assassin was Lynette Squeaky Frome. She tried to assassinate President Ford near the steps of the State Capitol building in Sacramento, California on September 5, 1975, just a few weeks before Sarah Jane Moore made her attempt. Squeaky Frome was also a Charles Manson family member, but that's another story. She was standing just a few feet away from the president, but fortunately when she pulled the trigger, her gun jammed. She also received a life sentence, but was paroled on August 14, 2009, after serving only 34 years. She's now 72 years old. This week, I want to thank my newest Patreon supporter, Mike Davis. Thank you, Mike, for your generous donation to my channel. It's very appreciated.
until our next trip to the cemetery together. Thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.